Welcome to Facts for Real Videos. California is constructing America's first full-scale high-speed rail line, which will connect San Francisco and Los Angeles' major population and economic centers. Once completed, the route would cut the six-hour journey between the two cities down to just under three hours by high-speed train. However, this massive undertaking is beset with major issues. The project is still a decade away from completion, three years behind its anticipated completion date and nearly $100 billion over budget. In this video, we'll look into America's most expensive infrastructure project to see what went wrong. First and foremost, we must comprehend why the California high-speed rail is being constructed in the first place. California is by far the wealthiest and most populous state in the United States. With a GDP of $3.6 trillion USD, it would be the world's fifth largest economy. And, with a population of about 40 million, California has more inhabitants than the entire neighboring country of Canada. Surprisingly, much of this wealth is concentrated in only two important population concentrations along the state's coast, San Francisco Bay and Greater Los Angeles. These two urban centers alone account for more than half of the total population of the state. Despite their economic importance, travel between these two metropolitan centers has always been inefficient and time-consuming. Driving from San Francisco to Los Angeles takes about six hours on average. And that doesn't even take into consideration the city's horrendous traffic, which is frequently ranked among the worst in the country. The only other option is to take a 90-minute domestic flight between the two cities, which is both expensive and environmentally damaging. The California High-Speed Rail Authority was founded in 1996 in an effort to construct a faster, cheaper, and more ecologically responsible mode of transportation. Its mission was to develop ideas for a high-speed rail system that would connect all of the state's major population centers. The developers' proposals were finally placed on ballots throughout California in 2008, with 53% of voters voting in support of the project's implementation. The same vote that announced the commencement of the project's construction also approved a $9 billion bond authorization. The first building plan for the California high-speed rail was divided into two phases. The first phase would run through the Central Valley, connecting San Francisco and Los Angeles through Merced, Fresno, and Bakersfield. This 800-kilometer route would also pass through extremely hilly terrain, such as Tehachapi Pass on the way from Bakersfield to Palmdale and Pacheco Pass on the way from Gilroy to Merced, which would necessitate at least 24 kilometers of tunnels. The first phase also includes an improvement to San Francisco's existing commuter rail system to support a blended system that will accommodate both the new high-speed line and the old local commuter trains. The second phase would extend the tracks much further north to Sacramento, the state capital, and even further south to San Diego, near the Mexican border. This expansion would extend the total length of the high-speed rail system to 1,300 kilometers, distributed across 24 stops. At the time, the total cost of the project was expected to be $33 billion. California's high-speed rail was set to start in 2020 promising to connect San Francisco to Los Angeles in just 2 hours and 40 minutes at top speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. The project would also have given numerous benefits to California. For one thing, the high-speed rail system would have dramatically decreased the state's pollution and carbon emissions because more people would have chosen the greener choice rather than flying the full distance. The project would also improve passenger transport by lowering air and vehicular traffic resulting in shorter travel times between the two cities. Finally, one of the most significant advantages of this project would be the enormous quantity of economic opportunities it would bring to the millions of people living in the Central Valley through jobs and by connecting them to the state's commercial areas. So far, so good, but what went wrong? Today, 15 years after Californians approved high-speed rail in 2008, the reality is radically different. The 2020 deadline has now passed, and its current future is far more dubious, due to several financial, legal, and environmental impediments. One big issue that the megaproject has always had is that the California High-Speed Rail Authority has never had the funding to build the complete line. When the project was approved in 2008, just $9 billion of the anticipated $33 billion needed to build the complete system had been secured by the project's creators. 
The remaining sum was expected to be covered mostly by the federal government, which would contribute $12 minus $16 billion, followed by $6 minus $7.5 billion from public-private partnerships, and finally $2 minus $3 billion from local governments. The project was significantly reliant on money mostly from Washington, but two years after the 2008 referendum, Congress had only contributed $3 billion of the alleged $16 billion. According to the most recent projections, the cost of completing just the first phase of the project, which would connect Los Angeles and San Francisco, has risen to as much as $128 billion due to inflation and growing construction and material costs. With little to no federal government assistance, it is uncertain where the developers would acquire the necessary cash to complete the project. Despite the project's growing expenses, a significant amount of time, money, and labor have already been invested in its construction. According to the most recent data, about $10 billion has already been spent on legal and construction fees. Furthermore, significant infrastructure, including as bridges, viaducts, and underpasses, has already been constructed along crucial stretches of the route. Aside from the obvious financial issues, the nature of America's judicial system is also contributing to the project's numerous delays. For starters, California is well known for its stringent environmental rules and legislation. Securing the requisite clearance to create a megaproject of this magnitude is a massive effort in and of itself. Indeed, the environmental clearance procedure has already cost the project's developers up to $1.3 billion of their already constrained budget. With the planned 2020 timetable already three years behind schedule, the California high-speed rail plans have shifted to accommodate financial setbacks. For example, instead of the continuous route from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a smaller portion of the projected system from Merced to Bakersfield is now under construction. This stretch was chosen to be built first because it was considered to be the most cost-effective across the whole system. Much of the road between Merced and Bakersfield is flat, rural farmland that the project's proponents can readily acquire and develop. The developers are currently giving this smaller part great priority and expect work to be completed by 2033 at the latest. When finished, travelers will be able to continue their journey from Merced to San Francisco, Sacramento, or San Jose by taking the regular trains that are now in service. Commuters can switch through bus services in Bakersfield, on the southern end of the state, to reach Los Angeles and the rest of Southern California. Commuters will be able to travel from San Francisco to Los Angeles even though the remaining high-speed lines haven't been finished by building just this portion of the tracks initially. After the Merced to Bakersfield section is finished, work will start on the other lines that will eventually connect to Los Angeles and San Francisco, finishing phase one of the development. However, because of the project's lack of money, it's still uncertain whether this phase would even start construction. However, the original phase two of the project, which called for extending the rails south to San Diego and north to Sacramento, is still in the planning phases and does not yet have a firm construction schedule or other details. What are the opinions of Californians on this then? Given the high cost and numerous construction delays associated with the high-speed rail project, many individuals have legitimate doubts about its feasibility. Many contend that there is no assurance that individuals will genuinely employ the upgraded programs for the smaller segment. With just 90,000 and 400,000 people living in each city, respectively, media outlets frequently refer to the Merced to Bakersfield route as the train to nowhere. The project's glaring lack of money, which has consistently been a major obstacle to its development, is another point of contention. And matters worsened when the project failed to make reasonable progress on construction, prompting the Trump administration to withhold more than $900 million in funds. Other reasons given by the project's opponents to oppose its development include inflated estimates of ridership, rising costs, and unacquired tracts of land. On the other hand, considering what has already been achieved, a lot of individuals remain positive about the project's future. First off, 680 of the 800 kilometers needed for the project have already been cleared for environmental purposes. By the end of 2023, they also intend to completely clear the entire route. Around 190 kilometers are now being built as part of the Bakersfield to Merced route, with notable advancements documented since the groundbreaking ceremony in 2015. 
Roughly 40% of the guideways had already been finished as of October 2022, with significant crossings like the San Joaquin and Fresno River viaducts already having been erected entirely. Furthermore, the project recently celebrated reaching the milestone of creating 10,000 employment, the majority of which came from the Central Valley, which is a poor and generally underserved area. In addition, locals anticipate that when the project is completed, it would spur economic expansion and open doors for millions of residents. In addition to the project's social and economic advantages, the newly elected Biden administration is more in favor of train infrastructure than the outgoing Trump administration. By doing this, the project believes that its chances of obtaining the crucial federal funding will be improved. Regarding the California high-speed rail project, what are your thoughts? Do you believe that high-speed rail is ready for America? Tell us in the comments section below. We appreciate your time and we'll see you in the upcoming video.